Welcome to Aviation News This Week number 100. This is episode 100 of my Aviation News This Week series and I would like to welcome you all back to the Citrus Aviation channel. So in today's video we're going to cover some of the news that's been going on and yeah let's get started here with the Ukrainian situation. So aviation has changed quite a bit since the last time I did one of these videos. And particularly over in Europe, things have kind of gone upside down with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So some of the interesting things that resulted from that were in Russia, the Russian aviation industry has essentially been shut down as parts can no longer be sold to Russian manufacturers through legal methods. I'm sure we'll find some illegal methods to still get them. And Russian aircraft can no longer fly in European or United States airspace, vice versa is also true. So the Russian aviation industry kind of has collapsed right now and which has also caused some issues with leasers who have seized aircraft when possible. But um, some aircraft have not been able to be seized and may never be seen again, who knows. Um, other interesting things that have happened is uh, what, what a lot of people have talked about is what happened in Ukraine. So two things have happened that a lot of people focused. First, the essentially complete annihilation and destruction of the Ukrainian Air Force. And secondly, the destruction of Antonov. So, Antonov had that major airfield just north of the city of Kiev. I don't know how exactly it's supposed to be pronounced. I think it's either Kiev or Kiev. I've heard either. I'm going to use Kiev because that's my preferred pronunciation for this video. But just north of the city of Kiev, there was the Homestead Airport, where Antonov Airlines is based. And the facility was attacked and completely destroyed by the Russian Army and Air Force, uh, using Mi-24 helicopters. Now, it should be mentioned there are still some aircraft that were left intact, kind of intact, but it looks like for the most part, a lot of facility was destroyed. And of course, the big headline item was that the Antonov 225 was destroyed. Now this aircraft was the largest aircraft in the world and it was the largest aircraft that's ever been built with one exception being the uh, the goose that was made in uh, 1949. Uh, that gigantic airplane was a bit bigger than the AN-225 but the 225 is the second largest. Of course this aircraft was developed for the purpose of being used for the Boron Russian space shuttle and this aircraft was going to be used as a transporter for it. That's why that's the big large humps right by the wind route section and that was basically where the uh, Russian space shuttle would be docked to the aircraft. Since then the AN-225 though has found quite a unique space for itself in the aviation industry as carrying oversized and overweight cargo. For example in 2009 the 225 carried the largest single piece of cargo ever which was a generator. I do not remember what the weight was, but I remember some very, very large amount of weight, and it was the largest amount of weight ever carried on a cargo plane, on any plane ever. So it's pretty incredible. This aircraft particularly was able to carry oversized items that need to be transported quickly, and so that's what's unique capabilities really brought. You can really do interesting things because of that aircraft. Now this wasn't the only aircraft that was destroyed, uh, a majority of the Antonov Airlines fleet was completely destroyed. Some aircraft may be able to be restored to service but most will never be able to return to service. And I do feel that the 225 is most likely going to be one of those aircraft that will be gone permanently. The interesting thing is because of the current era that we live in, we can have photojournalists where basically any individual with a phone is essentially a photojournalist in real life. And so a lot of the things that have been happening in Ukraine have been documented uh, and can just be seen online. And that is one of the things that the modern digital era has allowed for us. You can see a war going on and rice is happening and you can see all the things that happen in a war right up close. And so. I think the thing is what's making a lot of people horrified about what's happening in Ukraine is that the reality is a war that a lot of people have, haven't seen in their entire lives. For example, my generation has never seen a war. Maybe some of us were deployed to Afghanistan or Iraq, but other than that, 
never really seen a full-scale war. And so, for the first time in maybe about 50 years, yeah, maybe about 50 or 60 years, we're seeing a full-scale actual war break out in the continent of Europe. And uh, it's really interesting to see what it's like. I think a lot of people have been woken up to what a real war looks like. And so, um, destruction of Antonov is just one of the things that happens in, when a war is going on. So, a lot has been going on with the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. And, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, but, yeah, for, for now, the Russian lead attack has basically destroyed Ukrainian aviation, including its most iconic symbol, the AN-225. A DHL-757 recently crashed. This aircraft was landing at San Jose, Costa Rica, and the aircraft was unable to stop for whatever reason. Obviously, that cause is being investigated. The aircraft turned around at the end of the runway, trying to reduce some speed. And the aircraft sort of overran the taxi pad area there, at the holding pad at the end of the runway, and went off what looks to be about 30 to 40 foot decline down to a ravine. And this caused the fuselage to split near the rear of the fuselage, and the aircraft came to rest there. Now, because of that, the aircraft is basically total. There's almost no way this aircraft's going to go back in the south. Now, it might, but it's extremely unlikely, considering the age and the number of cycles this aircraft has on it, and considering the extensive amount of damage. Basically, the aircraft will split in two there near the tail section, and so it's going to be very difficult for this aircraft to be returned to service. Obviously, the reasons for the accident are currently still being investigated, but that is something that is very interesting that's going on there. So, this uh, incident occurred on the 7th of April 2022 in Costa Rica. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the cause of this was that really shows you that aircraft really aren't made to be off-road vehicles. They're made to stay on the pavement, and the moment they go off, and they go down a ravine or anything, they just completely collapse, which is the reality of an airframe. They're, not, they're made to be in the air and on the ground on a nice surface. Most aircraft cannot take rugged terrain. There are some exceptions, but most aircraft cannot. With fleet news, there's quite a bit going on. So, Ida Airways has two new aircraft they've painted into the livery. They painted a few A320s, but they've also now painted an A319. This new A319 first appeared on the 6th of January 2022 and is registered Echo India, India Mike November. I really like the new livery for Ida Airways and I think it looks great on the Airbus 319. I love how it has this Mediterranean sea blue color as the main color. Definitely different than the all white liveries that we're seeing a lot now. And of course it has the tail of Italy on the tail section. And it has some sort of symbols on the tail. I'm not exactly sure what those are, but if somebody knows, please comment below. Because nobody's really explained that to me what those are, and I haven't found any source material to tell to me. But it's a great livery, and a really nice plane. Uh, and once again, I'd like to take this time to thank every single person that submitted a photo and allows me to use their photos in these videos. Your credits are down in the description. Thank you once again to every photographer that allows me to use their photos on my videos. The second new aircraft that is now repainted into the new Ida Airways livery that I want to talk about here is the Airbus A330-200. This aircraft was first spotted in New York's JFK International Airport on the 20th of February 2022, coming from Rome, obviously. This aircraft is registered as Echo India, Echo Julia Papa, and it's an A330-302. This plane looks so cool in this livery. I think all the Ida Airways aircraft look really nice in this livery, and this one's yet another one. There's also an A350 that is in their new livery, however that aircraft has yet to, to be delivered to the airline. In fact, that aircraft, we'll talk about it in a future episode, but that aircraft is sort of interesting. That's not a new aircraft, as we'll talk about. But Ida Airways looking good with their new planes, and they will be repainting the rest of the livery, I assume, here in the next couple of years into the new livery, and uh, yeah, this one's a very good looking livery. Some of the formerly retired KLM 747s are getting new life as cargo aircraft. There are two that I want to highlight today. They're both based out of the same airport, 
they are operated by different airlines, but considering where these aircraft park, it seems like they might be actually operated by the same operator, even though they have a different airline name. Once again, I'd like to give a special thank you to the photographer who allows me to use his pictures in this video. He allowed me to use a bunch, including a series of these two aircraft uh, photographed at his local airport. And this one is the first of the two. This one is Victor Quebec Bravo Whiskey Mike, which is a former KLM 747-406M combi. So this is one of the 747s that was a combi aircraft that could be used as both a passenger and freighter at the same time, where a section of the back was used for freighter operations and the rest of the aircraft was used for passenger operations. Pretty unique setup that KLM had with that aircraft type. But this aircraft now operates for Jet 1X, which is a cargo company, and it looks so cool in this livery. Uh, they've essentially taken the KLM livery and just put like a white swoop up there, and then they painted the tail white. It looks pretty good. Taking an already good livery and just modifying a little bit, pretty good. This aircraft was first spotted on the 3rd of February. 2022 and then sister aircraft victor quebec bravo whiskey lima was spotted first on the 24th of february 2022 and it just uses the klm livery with a white tail you can even see where the klm titles were and they've just been removed from the aircraft you can see some of the residue from the application is still there and this aircraft is also 747-406 combi and both of these aircraft can be seen operating out of the netherlands and to portions of the entire world. You'll usually see them when they're in storage parked right next to each other. However, this one is operated by Long Tail Aviation, which is, as I'm confirming here, a co-company of Jet 1X. So these are operated both by Jet 1X, with Long Tail Aviation being just another brand for Jet 1X. Still really cool that both these aircraft operate together and that you can still see a KLM 747 mostly in the KLM livery flying around. In fact, there's two of them flying for Jet 1X. This airline has been acquiring several other 747s, as we will cover in a future episode. So it is really cool to see these aircraft flying around, and I do hope this airline the best of success with their endeavors, because I always love seeing old 747s still flying around. Next up, we have a special livery for Air Canada. Uh, this is on one of the Airbus A220-300s, and it is advertising one of the new Disney Pixar movies. I'm not a huge fan of movie liveries in general, so, you know, obviously this one is not going to be one of my favorites. But still a cool new aircraft for planes boss to go catch. Uh, this one's registered as Charlie Golf Victor Delta Papa. And this picture is actually sent to me by a fan of the channel, so thank you so much for watching my videos, and hopefully you enjoyed this entry in on the video. It's really cool to see new Canadian planes and for Canadian plane files, this is another great plane to go catch. Something that is very, very exciting to me is the arrival of the first Delta A321neo. This aircraft first appeared in about January, February 2022 and the aircraft was delivered to Delta Airlines on the 24th of March 2022 as it is seen here in Atlanta being fitted and prepared for its crew familiarization flights, which should begin here really soon. And we will talk more about this aircraft in the near future, but this is the very first Delta Airbus A321neo. What a cool plane this is. This is the Dash 271NX, and it looks so good. I'm not sure what engine this is, but it is a 71NX. Delta, I believe, now is the fifth. North American operator to operate the A321neo, JetBlue, and American for the first two, and then Valoris and Viva La Airbus also start operating the A321neo, and uh, there will be more to come, as I do suspect most North American carriers will start operating the A321neo at some point. The final main fleet item that we have to talk about today is going to be a controversial topic so this is the new condor livery and this livery uh, let's just say at least a few things to be desired now i'm gonna start the positive two positives um the livery is at least bright and colorful and is not your white those are the two things i can say positive about it 
So this livery is going to come about five or six different variants. It's basically a big stripe livery, as you can see all these stripes going horizontally along the entire aircraft. And then you have the Condor text written there underneath the uh, main passenger windows there, uh, between the L1 and L2 door, on this here, the Airbus, Airbus 330. And then we have the Condor logo up on the tail section in between two stripes. So the first aircraft to receive this livery is this one here, which is currently in the test registration, Foxtrot Whiskey Whiskey Charlie Sierra, and this will be going to Condor, as they will be switching to the A330 941neo and this will be the very first one of them here but this one wears the green livery which in my opinion is the most eyesore of them all i will be doing a redesign of this livery in photoshop so stay tuned for that video where i will show you how they could have improved this livery but this one's the most hideous it just kind of looks like an eyesore some people have described it as looking like uh prison clothes or the red rolls in this livery which has not been unveiled yet but that'll be on 757 the red rolls in this livery look kind of looks like waldo or all sorts of interesting striped objects it just doesn't walk well on the airbus 330 i just do not like how it looks now that being said that that was spot on the 4th of april also spot on the 4th of april was the first a321 in the new livery this one here is an a321-231 Delta, Alpha India, Alpha Delta is the registration of this one. And this one wears the orange livery, the orange stripe livery, which I think looks alright. Uh, another detail you can see in the image is that the orange stripe livery has horizontal stripes on the winglet, which I think look a little bit better than the vertical stripes, which I'm, I don't know, it just doesn't sit well with me. But I think they could have made it look awesome, and I'll, I'll show you in Photoshop how they could have done it. But this livery here in the orange livery looks better it's not as much of an eyesore as that kind of medium green color which i don't really like it looks like a default photoshop color well, this one actually has some pop to it a little bit of design really nice um aircraft livery to be honest this one looks all right and then finally we have the blue Condor 321, which has been spotted on the 13th of April 2022. There's also a blue A320 with just the tail section painted and the rest is white that's been flying around. Hopefully I can show that in a future episode. This blue one doesn't look too bad either. In fact, this was the first one that I've seen that actually kind of looks alright. Uh, I kind of, first one I would say, yeah, I kind of like that. But the biggest issue that I have with this livery, um, isn't the uniqueness because the uniqueness is something that could walk you could actually make a vertical livery walk but you have your branding in black and when you mix it with these colors that you have here the black doesn't walk super well as it's very difficult to tell the brand like the condor logo is very small in the tail so it's very difficult for someone to tell what that logo is and then the condor text on the fuselage is also really really small which is also making it difficult to tell what airline it is you're flying now obviously because of the uniqueness of this livery no one's gonna miss this livery like everyone's gonna know what it is but it's hard to tell who it belongs to because the identifiers for the brand are really small on the aircraft even on the engine the condor logo is really tiny so what you're gonna see in my redesign is a bit of a hint is i'm gonna make these titles much bigger and much easier to spot in addition what they could have done is they could have made the titles color matching to the livery so for example on this blue one they could have made the condor text and titles blue or white depending on what color surface is behind the logo on the orange one they could have made it orange or white and on the a330 they could have made it green or white but obviously i'll show the redesign and show how much better it would look with the redesign but this livery leaves some things to be desired i will give them points for it being unique but there are some improvements that they could make finally we have some route news and this one involves delta airlines expansion out of boston so delta airlines is reopening their focus city out of boston logan international airport which they have for about the last five or six years really declined or diminished the significance of boston for the route network they just didn't see it as a good investment however 
Interest in a Boston Focus City Slant hub has increased with Delta, and they will be increasing their operations out of Boston Logan, and they'll be adding a bunch of new routes, and importantly, for those who are aviation enthusiasts, they will be announcing and operating their first flights on the A321neo out of Boston Logan. Now they'll be operating these on Transcon routes, which makes sense because that's one of the A321NX's great capabilities is to operate Transcon routes. The A321 will introduce Delta's brand new next generation cabin, which looks pretty spicy from the photos I've seen. I look forward to selling it off in a video uh, when I fly the aircraft. So yes, I will be flying one of them. The very first route is to start on May the 20th, 2022. That will be Boston to San Francisco. And that will be on the A321neo. You can see on here the flights that will be offered. They will be starting at twice daily each direction. Eventually that will be three times daily. All on the A321neo, Boston, San Francisco. The second new service for Delta's A321neo will be Boston to Seattle. Another Transcon route. That service starts on August 11th, 2022. A second daily flight on the A321neo will be started on the 20th of September, and then a third daily flight on the 20th of October. The next route will be starting on the 20th of August 2022, and that will be to San Diego. Now this service actually will start on July 11th, but that will be on the regular A321 and then the 321neo on August 20th. And then the fourth route, which will also be a new route out of Boston, will be to Denver. And this one starts also on July 11th, but that will be on the regular A321. And the A321 Neo service will start on the 20th of August 2022. So pretty cool there that Delta is starting all this new service. I believe they're also adding a third flight on the San Francisco service as well. So Delta is really expanding the services out of Boston. You definitely see a huge Transcon market there for the A321 Neo. And this is an aircraft that I'm very, very excited to get my hands on and to actually fly. So, this will be a really cool plane. It looks like it'll be a fantastic plane to fly on and something that will be amazing for aviation enthusiasts, including myself. I will be on one of the first A321neo flights if I can make it work. So that is it for aviation news this week. This is episode 100. I want to thank you all so much for 100 episodes. And I'm going to start bringing back something that's been a while since I've done, but this is where I talk about what's going on with the channel and maybe a few little, like, channel update things. So, April so far has been a really good month for channel analytics. I want to thank you all so much for watching all the videos. We had two videos that got over a thousand views this month. We had the Massive Unboxing 10, which is the largest ever made on YouTube with 69 planes. I didn't intentionally make that 69, just happened to be the number that was. And then... Model Aircraft News Monthly, February and March edition did incredibly well. And I, I, that's a series I've always enjoyed making, and I really want to thank you all so much for watching the video and for sharing it, and that you all really did enjoy that video. Uh, another episode will be coming here very soon. Some unboxings I did did pretty well as well this month. Uh, the April release set from Gemini, that video did pretty good. I really want to thank you all so much for watching the videos. This basically shows the sort of content that you guys want to see. So I'm going to keep making the stuff that you all want to see. And uh, airport updates have come back. So I'm really happy to bring those back. You all seem to be really enjoying them. I'm going to try and bring back all the airports I used to do. As well as introduce some new ones. I do have some big trips planned. Um, I have two very big trips planned. And with both these trips combined, it'll probably be somewhere around 20 flights that you can expect to see me on. So... I'm going to be flying quite a bit here in the next couple months, um, particularly in May. There's going to be a ton of stuff going on there, so stay tuned for some of that. I'm also going to do my Delta A320 first class review video that will be coming out. Um, obviously, new model aircraft news monthly video and a bunch of other good things. So, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed episode 100 and an upcoming new content form where you can see more of my news in another format. So, you know, stay tuned for what that might be. So, with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day and God bless you.